What's going on YouTube? Look, I'm back in the reaction. Today we got Aussie's Drills Bloody Gang War 1 4 versus 21 District. I think that's Australia, right? Australia Aussie. Australia, yep. You know what I'm saying? So check out the last Trap Little Boss reaction. Trap Little Ross reaction, my fault. Um, yeah, it's gonna be there at the end of the video. Stay tuned. You know what I'm saying? Like if you do, comment, subscribe, or to the band. Follow my gram at the official link in the description. Turn on post notifications. Comment which one we're actually next. Let's get into it. Video is sponsored by Wondershare Filmora. When I hear the phrase broad day booting in Australia, I tend to think of this. Because on the streets of Sydney, Australian drillers, much like their British counterparts, tend to have a bit of trouble getting their hands on firearms. Meaning that modern day Aussie drillers have to rely on their shanks and shivs to get the job done. Now, I've not yet had the privilege of visiting Australia myself, and I know it's easy to assume that Australia land is nothing more than cans of fosters, kangaroos in pouches, and shrimps on barbies. But today, I'm here to tell you that in the west of Sydney, it's more foster homes, shanks in pouches, and barbecue pokers headed straight for your back in eyeballs. Yes, historically, Australia has been home to a host of gangsters, far beyond the amusing antics of Chopper Reed. In fact, gangsters from Southeast Asia, China, and Vietnam have all had a presence in the country since the formation of the lucrative Aussie drug market wow, in the so 1980s. Yeah, Gang warfare that. that actually culminated in the assassination of the anti-drug politician in Australia, John Newman. And then, of course, you've got your biker or bikey gang, Two-wheeled outlaws like the Banditos, Hells Angels, or Gypsy Jokers, the likes of whom were truly wild, being responsible for some of the most insane instances of Aussie street violence, including a 1984 shootout that left seven people dead, known as the Milpera Massacre. It was actually that mm. incident itself that even led to stricter gun laws in New South Wales. But you know your boy TLR is a driller at heart. So in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the Aussie youth gangs, who would eventually move on from doing dirt in the street to pioneer the Aussie drill music movement. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the youth gangs in Sydney's Inner West and Greater West, whose smaller sets would battle it out on the streets of Sydney for years, before eventually spawning two of the most exciting Aussie drill crews in history. The 1-4 hailing out of the Greater West, and 21 District hailing from the Inner West. These specific crews were made up of the rapping young men who had emerged and survived the dangerous skirmishes between the Inner West and the Greater West gangs, with a significant number of the lads from both of these groups being Pacific Islanders, which if you didn't know, refers to an ethnic group of people hailing from around 80 different islands in the Western Pacific, many of whom's ancestors were brought to Australia in the 19th century to work in sugar fields, with the subsequent generation of young Pacific Islanders going on to be historically profiled by Australia's police, as well as Asian immigrants mainly based on assumptions and stereotypes derived from the criminal gangs that had come overseas to Australia. So growing up as a young islander in Australia, much like marginalised groups in the US or the UK, that would make you a target for police brutality, with members of 1-4 even recounting being beaten in black and blue by the cops as early as age 14. In fact, the underrepresentation of Pacific Islanders in Aussie media plays a big part in making Aussie drill so exciting. Because until the Aussie drillers made it cool, these young men from these unique backgrounds were extremely underrepresented in Aussie media. You know, unless you count the brown face wearing character from Summer Heights High, Jonah from Tonga. Cringe. Anywho, much like we've seen in the hoods of Chicago, London, and New York all around the world, at a certain point, these underrepresented gangsters from the hood managed to come up with a cohesive group identity. And once we saw people coming out of these situations getting good at rapping, we began to see Aussie gang and street culture flourish, getting a voice through music. And from observing the likes of 1-4 and 21 District, even us UK drillers have been delighted to learn some of the colourful slang of these Sydney savages. I mean, some of the best exports from Australia these days are delightful insults for your ops, like the word Gronk. But uh, around here, a real filthy word to call your enemies like dogs and gronks, you know what I mean? You've also got the phrase lads, which unlike in England where it tends to mean obnoxious university sports team wanker, in Aussie street culture lads or eshes formally refers to a persecuted Australian lad hailing from the hood, most likely to be seen wearing sportswear, being working class and potentially up to no good. This is more akin to a chav in the UK, or perhaps at a stretch what the Americans might call <coughs> trailer trash. And of course you've got <coughs> urchers, which is essentially a lad who is out to make money illegally or by any means necessary. Hell, we all know what it feels like just to be a young lad trying to urch a little money, doesn't matter where you're from in the world. So lads, let's take a look-see at some of the little urchers who are making a few Aussie dollars out of this drill business. But first, a word from our sponsor. In the beginning, when I started on YouTube, one of the biggest problems I had was picking which editing software to use. So today I'm super gassed to share a new editing solution. Wondershare, Filmora 10, and I'm hoping you might use it. It's love okay. by editors just starting out. And nah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you say talking though.
NF. Baby, appreciate you. Bye. NF40. A message from Fireball. What did I say? I was 6 5. Do we split the bill? I need to clean my apartment. F it. Fireball, free your fire. Oh, yeah, I just is a bad. coalition of Aussie street gangs based in Sydney's Greater West. With a particular presence in Mount Druitt, also known as Mountie or Mountie County, with the collection of numerous street crews coming from this area, sometimes being referred to as the Mountie County Coalition. And what makes us a dual group is that we actually do what we rap about. And through its home, you know, yeah, it's a big place. It's the trenches. And it's worth pointing out, as is often the case with these stories, Mounty County is indeed the suburb of Sydney with the highest amount of gun crime. But it's from this collection of street lads repping NF14 that spawned the groundbreaking Aussie Drill Crew 1-4. And while Aussie rappers were already kind of doing bits in their native country in the 2000s in the form of lad rap, it seems plainly obvious that over the past few years, mainly out of sheer high quality music and frequent output, that 1-4 have frankly managed to become the most significant and successful rap-based movement to ever come out of Australia. The main members of 1-4 include JMs, Lex, YP, Spenny and Selly. And because 1-4 are from Mount Druitt or Mountie County, which is in a 27 postcode, they're known to frequently throw up and shout out the 27 number, with numerous lyrics from 1-4 suggesting they're down to ride for that 2 double seven. Oh, From 2017, 1-4 burst onto the scene with their track Ready For War, heavily inspired by Call Me A Spartan by the Harlem Spartans. That was followed up by the track What You Know, which featured a gang of Aussie lads that were so menacing I nearly did the dash from my computer screen just watching it. Hey, when you drill this hard, ain't no one gonna tell you how to use stairs properly. So since they burst onto the scene and introduced their native country to the booming, hard sounds of a UK and New York drill, 1-4 have essentially taken over and become the pioneers of the entire Aussie drill movement. Again, with a lot of their appeal essentially deriving from the fact that they were the first crew of Pacific Islanders to rap proudly about their lives in their native Aussie accents. And I've got to say, there's just something about hearing that Aussie accent over a hard UK drill beat that just sounds so cold. But it wasn't just their music that was pioneering, because they were also using their music videos to introduce the Aussie public to their slick street fashion style too, with a lot of their music videos around this time essentially looking like adverts for the Foot Locker prison wrench. So with all of these lads out here rocking more menacing sportswear than a Sports Direct jumble sale, 1-4 with their <laughs> unique sound and Eche fashion style that hadn't been seen by the streets before, 1-4 quickly became the coolest thing going, proving to other disadvantaged young men from the same areas that there is indeed another way to make it out of these streets. So from here, 1-4's sound continued to progress, and they would go on to drop other big releases like the track Shanks and Shib. A song and video which was hailed by many as potentially the first glimpse that the public had truly gotten of real life for lads on the streets of the Greater West. The first track they put out, The Shanks and Shivs, no one had seen anything like that in Australia. No one had seen young islanders or young ethnics in general represent their experience of the street. And Shanks and Shivs was followed by even more bangers like The Message, Spot the Difference, and Lads in the Hood. And at a certain point, 1-4's unique style of Aussie-accented drilling would capture the attention of drill and rap reaction channels all over the world, setting them up nicely for viral success. I never knew those drillers in Australia. I, can't lie. I didn't know they existed over there. Did these not beef from the sports I'm fighters and that? Eventually, off the back of all of this energy, 1-4 would bang themselves some mainstream success with the song in the beginning, getting 1 million views on YouTube in the first 48 hours and going number 39 on the Aussie charts. And from here, they were on a roll, dropping numerous follow-up songs which would hit the charts. Like Welcome to Prison, Say It Again with Big ASAP, ASAP Berg, their emotional love letter to Mountie County, Home and Away, and the more pop-leaning radio hit My City, featuring fellow rapping Aussie twink, The Kid Leroy. Basically, you'd be lying if you said that 1-4 didn't single-handedly put drilling at the forefront of Aussie music and rap culture. But of course, when you're creating a successful scene like this completely from scratch, it doesn't take long for other people to see what's going on and try and get in on your your trap. And while their musical legacy is much less well established than 1-4's, it would be a travesty to overlook the musical development of their most hated ops, the Inner West 21 District. 21 District refers to both a coalition of street gangs in the inner west of Sydney, as well as an Aussie drill music group made up of members coming out of these areas. Their name actually comes from postcodes in Sydney that start with 21, including Guildford 2161, which was actually home of the first KFC in Australia, thanks Wikipedia, Marylands 2160, Blacktown 2148, Smithfield 2164, and Cabramatta 2166. Sometimes this coalition of street crews is referred to as the inner west brotherhood. Furthermore, subgroups exist as part of this coalition 
edition, such as G40 hailing from Guildford 2161. In fact, G40 has actually even been shouted out in 21 districts music, and it's also worth mentioning that as part of the Inner West Coalition, other groups like 3T exist who have apparently even been rapping all the way back to the 2000s, and would even be out here making diss tracks to their Greater West Ops in 2010 before the Aussie Drill movement took off and 1-4 became the big dogs in the game. The reality is that the rise of 21 District, the rapping crew, is intrinsically linked to 1-4's rise because 21 District's breakout track, The Reply, is itself a direct response to 1-4's track, The Message, which actually included a diss referring to a murdered 21 District member. In fact, the feud between these two crews and their related coalition of gangs permeates the music on both sides with numerous lyrics from 21 District's The Reply, referring to riding out on the ops. And the same can be said for 21 District's second biggest track still here, featuring numerous references to attempting to drill it on the other side. To be fair, 21 District's rap unit haven't quite reached the level of success that 1-4 have pioneering the sound, but they've certainly shown a great deal of promise and deserve a lot of respect. The star members of 21 District's rapping crew include Mac 11, Ron Gotti, Jay Lex, A1 and Malik. So now you know the crews, the music they make and the sides they rep. Now we can take a closer look at some of the wild incidents that have gone down on the streets of Sydney between these two warring groups of lads. At Lowe's, every pro is an MVP to us. That's why we built a different kind of rewards and partnership program. Just like we've seen with the gangs of Chicago and London, often the origins of these deadly gang feuds are as simple as teenage schoolyard scraps, which unfortunately, as members get older, escalate into shootings and stabbings, as made clear by JMs from 1-4. Clearly, tit-for-tat violence has been going on in Sydney's inner and greater west for decades, so we can't necessarily trace back every single incident that's gone on between these two groups of lads. But what we can do is take a closer look at some specific high-profile incidents that have made significant contributions to the beef and the music between 21 districts. And one four. An early one was a 2011 incident at a Westfield shopping center where apparently members from Inner West's G40 had planned a 100 man deep fight with their ops BYOW, bring your own weapons. Now, this skirmish was being arranged on Facebook of all places, and it's no surprise then that eventually the cops caught wind of it and were able to arrive at the scene just after things had kicked off, arresting 13 people at the scene and recovering numerous homemade weapons and baseball bats. Police have warned they'll be making dozens more arrests after a mass brawl at a shopping center in. Sydney's West. Two gangs armed with homemade weapons stormed Westfield's Mount Druitt shopping centre last night after pre-arranging the fight on Facebook. Fighting broke out at the Mount Druitt station after one group got off a train and were met by the other, all of Pacific Island origin. Before long, a wild melee involving up to a hundred spilled through the doors of the Westfield shopping centre. Thirteen arrested, including four juveniles, police expect to make more arrests. At a certain point, these organised brawls escalated to stabbings and shootings. In April 2012, five drive-by shootings were reported in Sydney in a 48-hour space, with these taking place around North Mead in the Greater West, with the audio from the news report of the those drive-by shootings being used many years later as the intro for 21 District Track The Reply. Now, Sydney police say there were five drive-by shootings in the city overnight. Our reporter Jason Nom joins us from North Mead in the city's west. Um, so, five shootings within uh, four and a half hours, um, yet, you know, it just, the spate of shootings just don't seem to be ending. From here, things were not sweet in the years that followed. People have been found beaten to death in Mount Druitt as early as 2015, with it having been suggested on social media that the man killed was indeed NF. 14, with the killer fleeing and getting the train to Blacktown, 2148. A young man has been murdered in Sydney's west overnight. His body was found sprawled on a footpath at Mount Druitt shortly after midnight. Very large crime scene. Detectives say that they believe the killer and maybe others involved boarded a train at Mount Druitt poli police station, or Mount Druitt train station rather, boarded a train to Blacktown and that is where they arrested an 18 year old man at around 2.30 this morning. And the beef between these two sets eventually did make its way to music far before Aussie Drill had developed its sound. There's examples in 2016 with rappers from NF14 dissing the Inner West rapping over the beat to mob deep shook ones. And over on the Inner West side you've got the likes of 3T dropping disses on the Greater West too. So while these mini music beefs were occurring, this was the same year that the police were investigating a savage beating in Mount Druitt where a 17 year old was beaten unconscious by a gang of armed thugs. An incident which like many of the ones I'm about to discuss was spectacularly 
caught on camera. But it's far too violent to show you without getting demonetized. You're gonna have to do your homework if you wanna see that grisly shit. Anywho, at this point, the cops begun to single out the gangs in Mount Druitt as being completely out of control, suggesting frequent shootings in the area, as well as fist fights that were being uploaded to YouTube were contributing to a spike of gang activity in the area. Meanwhile, by 2018, 1-4 were beginning to make waves in music for the first time in Aussie Drill, providing a template of a legal route through music away from the streets. However, these Gs taking music seriously did not stop the bloodshed on the streets, as this feud would soon turn into a very public tragedy. When in 2018, we saw the murder of 20-year-old Tino Henry, allegedly from the inner west with ties to 21 District. 20-year-old Tino Henry had the world at his feet, but in the early hours of this morning, his promising young life ended abruptly. In this alleyway off Fitzsimmons Street in Parramatta, he was fatally stabbed in the chest. This incident sparked a wave of violence between the groups, which was only inflamed further by 1-4 going on to drop lyrics, directly disrespecting their fallen op. Naturally, all of this and the incidents that followed would provoke a strong response from the police of Sydney, but what couldn't be predicted is just how hard they would come at these crews, ultimately taking several of their key members off the streets with hard sentences, as well as attacking their legitimate business of making money through music. 1-4, just off the cusp of mainstream industry success in music, would unfortunately end up losing several members over a 2018 fight. In July, months before the deadly stabbing of Tino Henry, a huge brawl took place at Rooty Hill Gaming Lounge Carousel Inn. This involved Lex from 1-4, who had allegedly been kicked out of the lounge over a drunken row over a machine. Now, in what little defense I can offer to Lex, it had been reported that racial slurs had been thrown during this argument, but who knows what really went down. Whatever was said was clearly no good and retaliation was a must, with Lex coming back with YP and Selly from 1-4 armed with weapons. At this point, the lads proceeded to give a savage beatdown to several people in the lounge, all of which was caught extensively on camera, another shocking scene that I sadly cannot show you on YouTube. But essentially, Lex beat a man to the ground, grabbing him by the hair and taunting him to his face. YP was identified as having smashed a chair leg into the back of an op's head, and Selly was said to have pounded a man's head repeatedly with a hammer, this vicious attack apparently leaving one of the victims unable to feel part of their face. 1-4 gave these guys the Lil Wayne and Jewels treatment, for God's sake. With all this on camera, it's no surprise that these lads ended up in court sharpish, without a chair leg to stand on or swing at the judge's head. Lex ultimately got slapped with four and a half years for instigating the fight. YP got four years for swinging the chair leg, and I assume also leaving a very unsafe three-legged chair out there for one of his ops to sit down and fall off of. But it was Selly who got the worst of it for whiling out with that hammer, with the judge dishing out a hefty 10-year sentence. This was a devastating blow to 1-4 as a cohesive group, as well as their business, meaning that star members' appearances on songs would be limited to jailhouse phone calls like we saw at the start of the track Welcome to Prison. And just like we saw around the violent summer of 2018 in UK drill, all of the goings on in the street would lead to huge scrutiny by the police who would quickly crack down on both the illegal violence and the legitimate music business. In 2019, 1-4 began to have their shows cancelled by the police, with it being claimed that the cops were pressuring venues not to host these Aussie drillers. 1-4 have suggested that the cops were really just trying to shut down their only route to making legal money. And over on the 21 district side, they were seeing similar problems. And despite trying to make it clear with public statements saying that they're not criminals and that the rapping crew is no longer involved in crime, that hasn't stopped the police from shutting down their shows and video shoots too, as they explained in this statement. But while the cops were shutting down their legitimate businesses, since the killing of Tino, skirmishes were continuing in the streets. Another incident popped off where there were numerous drive-by shootings in a 48 hour period, with speculation that the homes of rival members were targeted. Within only a month of these shootings, 20 one district had released their song The Reply, clapping back at 1-4 who had dissed Fallen Tino on their track The Message, starting that song off with audio from the news report about the 2012 shooting situation which was very similar, which may suggest that these are all somehow linked. So clearly the beef was publicly active well into 2019, when we would see the likes of Spenny from 1-4 lurking in the ops turf of Guildford on Snapchat. Look where Spenny's at tonight. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. where is They all gone missing to Now 21 district, you pussies. Fucking show up to me I was there for 30 minutes, he didn't even come. Eventually members would come face to face, leading to another mini fight outside the Westfield Parameta in June 2019, where knives were pulled out in front of shocked members of the public, but thankfully the groups disbanded before things got serious. In the middle of a busy intersection outside Westfield Parramatta yesterday, men fight on as a crowd gathered, before some of the men retreated to their car. Another man smashes the vehicle as it races around the corner. 
apparently members from these groups would run into each other again later one evening at a hookah lounge in another spectacular fight where an insane amount of objects and projectiles were thrown. Detectives are investigating if the same men involved in the Parramatta incident were behind another fight at Auburn last night. Then the following month, another big gang fight spilled into the streets of Sydney in July, along with a clip shared by 21 members with the suggestion that 1-4 are quick to pull out knives in fights, an apparent reference to the previous incident where a blade was pulled out at the Westfield fight. At this point, there are crews brawling publicly on the streets of Sydney nearly every week. And gang culture was permeating mainstream culture so much that the New South Wales police had to warn the National Rugby League to stop players throwing up gang signs on the pitch. But if it was bad enough losing rapping members of 1-4 to prison when they could have been making legal money on the streets, it looked like the police were going hard at targeting the non-rapping street teams of the Greater West Gangsters, with a very public arrest in 2019 of a supposedly high-ranking street figure. With this marking the beginning of a big crackdown on Aussie street crews, with the cops calling in Raptor 13, the Raptor Squad, or Strike Force Raptor, a squad of hardened Sydney cops famous for busting biker gangs. Raptor Squad, it's a bit of an unnecessarily menacing name, isn't it? Like, you're trying to catch some gangsters, not an army of pterodactyls. Anyway, the Raptors vowed to shut down Sydney's drill crews and make every aspect of their lives uncomfortable. They directly claimed responsibility for cancelling the driller shows, and their sergeant said that they had planned to use more serious crime prevention orders, usually reserved for biker gangs or terry wrists, to shut down 1-4's activities. Thankfully today, 1-4 is still going strong, having recently dropped their Against All Odds EP, which was fire, despite being essentially banned from performing, with the cops completely shutting down their national tour. Meanwhile, on the other side, 21 District have been less musically active, but off the strength of their early tracks, I've got absolutely no doubt that with a bit of effort and backing, they could be on top musically too, if they wanted to. Meanwhile, things are still going on on the streets. In July 2020, the news were reporting on a hammer attack linked to gangs from the Inner West, where rival members were forced on camera by members from the Inner West to throw up 21 gang signs and kiss their feet. Look, the thing that made people love Aussie Drill really is the music, not the antics or the violence. A lot of people have loved One Four's music without even understanding the true context of what these guys have gone through. So I really hope that going forward we hear a lot more music from both sides and less activity in the street. There's a lot of overlap between the Aussie and the UK drill movements, and if there's anything to learn from what we've got going on here, it's that eventually with enough mainstream success, you can get the cops off your back, stack that legal money, and get far away from the tough environment that made you. I hope that happens because I love One Four and 21 District's music, and I want to see them both flourish. Hope you enjoyed learning more about the background of Aussie drill music. I certainly enjoyed listening to it and make Yo, it's tough. I must have a little insight on Australian drill, man. Leave me some Australian drill um, songs that y'all want me to react to, man. Word. But check out the last trap little Ross reaction that's right on your screen right now, my brothers and sisters. Like the video, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you'll react to next. Turn on post notifications. Road to the band. Follow my Instagram at long official link in the description of me out of here, I'm saying. This oh shit. Oh. Uh.